Hello everybody, welcome to Cubone, my name is Quentin, and today is July 3rd, 2024. Welcome to a new Helldivers 2 weekly recap. This week was full of two major orders that really tested the limits of what we were capable of as Helldivers, with repeated planetary defenses and having to hold quite a few planets in the sake of liberty. Before we begin, however, last week's video did receive a comment by user BenC4346, pointing out something that I missed. On Sunday, the defense of Poply 9 was completed surprisingly fast overnight, and I overlooked this as we had completed Mort at roughly the same time, cutting off supply lines and auto-completing the defense. I don't know how I missed this, but given I can't be in-game 24-7, I'm bound to miss Mort. If you notice anything, please do comment below, and I will try to correct it, either in the next video or at least in the comments. Without any further ado, let's get into the news. Last Tuesday saw us wrapping up the major order to hold a series of planets to prevent bots from entering Malevolon Creek. Beginning with this week's news, as Wednesday began, first must be mentioned the fall of Nivel 43, a great tragedy to be sure, but the Helldivers were immediately given a new task. Briefing, the terminate hunger to infest and consume new worlds is as endless as their tyranny. Following our recent expulsion operation in the Mirren and Draco sectors, the terminates have now spread to the Falstaff and Jin Z sectors. These regions have long been allocated by the Ministry of Expansion for long-term colonization. This greedy annexation will not be tolerated. Only sparse colonial outposts exist on these planets. The Terminids have historically spread towards planets with much higher democratic activity, likely an instinctive threat response. While this new behavior could theoretically be linked to the recent nuclear-aided nursery and annihilation actions, our top behavioral analysts agree that a simple random mutation is the most likely explanation. It is imperative to maintain our focus on preventing the expansion of the Terminids. If they are allowed to spread to these worlds, there will be no end to their rampant infestation. A rough equivalent to the last major order, but now we must hold two Two sectors with the planets Ursin Sands, Boar Rock, Pandion 24, Fact Bay, and Akamar 4. As the major order began, we held two planets, with Fact Bay having the highest liberation and player count, until defenses began on Boar Rock and Akamar 4, the two planets that we already controlled. Divers rallied to both, taking most of the day, but completing the defenses around 5:30 p.m. and 8:45 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, respectively. An additional defense had begun on 40 Prime, but divers did move on to Fact Bay. Slow slowly raising it from the bug's clutches. Meanwhile, 6,000 divers were on Pandion 24, an MO planet, but 9,000, 16% of divers, were on Gakrox, a planet not tied to the MO. Look, I know I said last week that players like the planet, but damn. Unfortunately, the new major order left the bot front dead, and I only bring this up because look at how depressing this is. So many planets in need of liberty. One last minor thing for Wednesday, I'd be remiss not to mention. We did gain a new weapon experimentation, the AC-8 autocannon strategy had been temporarily authorized for use by all Helldivers. At the beginning of Thursday, we did fail the defense on 4E Prime around 5 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. It doesn't seem as though any defenses happened through Thursday that I could find, but perhaps I may have missed them. As it stands, we continued working on the Major Order, raising Fact Bay to almost 40%, though the divers still on Gekrux saw it drop to 31.5% by the end of Thursday. This stayed much the same through Friday, with Fact Bay clearing sometime Friday morning. Helldivers.io seems to have crashed and as that is one of my primary sources, I unfortunately don't know what happened during this time. Things look promising though, with only Ursin, Sands, and Pandion 24 left on the major order. The latter rose to nearly 60% by 3pm Mountain Daylight Time until the bugs rallied a counter-offensive. Three new defenses began on Akamar 4, Boar Rock, and the recently liberated Fact Bay, the three planets we already held for the major order. Players split fairly evenly between them, with 8,000 on Boar Rock and 5,000 on each of the other two at first, rising to roughly 12 and 13,000 on Fact Bay and Akamar 4, respectively, as the two were completed around 2.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Saturday morning. Borok took a little longer, rising to over 19,000 by 11.40 a.m. as it too was completed. Divers were not letting the bugs gain any ground, but that wasn't enough as divers got Pandion 24 to 75% by noon and completed the planet by 10 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This was at the expense of a planet in the center of the bot front as Crimsica came under attack around 4.30 Saturday morning, rising in players through the day, but even as we took Pandion 24 and the player count on Crimsica jumped to over 12,000, 
at 10 p.m., we were still behind on the liberation rate. It wasn't clear if we'd be able to save it, but if not, it'd be for the greater good, with over 23,000 divers on Esker. The planet was blocking our access to major order planet Ursin Sands and leaving Boar Rock vulnerable. We needed all the divers we could get there, even with three days left on the major order. The bugs weren't going to make it easy on us, however, as around 4.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Krimska was lost, followed by two new defenses on Akamar 4 and Fact Bay once again. The player count on the former very quickly rose to over 28,000, fighting back the bugs to almost 86% by 1.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Fact Bay wasn't faring much worse, with nearly 12,000 raising it to over 30% by the same time. To be blunt, though, divers were making the wrong choice. We should have had as many divers as possible clearing Akamar 4, as we did, then moving to the southern planet Gatria, which was at 32% with only 2,000 divers planet side. If we had taken that planet, it would have stopped the attack on Fact Bay and prevented further attack on it, allowing us to focus on Esker, which was only at 6%, with 6,000 divers planet side. We only had two and a half days before the major order expired, and our progress was faltering. The player count on Esker quickly rose to nearly 21,000 by Sunday's end, continuing quickly through Monday, with 22,000 divers raising the planet to almost 45% by Monday morning, and growing to over 35,000 divers and 92% by Monday's end. Arrowhead has comfortably settled into a routine of giving us the most action on Friday through the weekend, it seems, which is great to make us feel a little less overwhelmed and like we're actually getting more done. This reflects best in the way that we've been handling major orders. The last few have been handled pretty well, regardless of if we won or not. But by the very tail end of Monday, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Esker was completed. And by Tuesday morning, over 24,000 divers had raised Ursin Sands, the final planet needed for the major order, over 43%, in one of the fastest liberation rates I've seen in a while. This continued through the day, raising to over 30,000 players and 57% by noon. And later, nearly 33,000 divers got it to 74% by the time of editing this video. It's estimated to be liberated around 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time Tuesday, and all we'll need to do is hold the planets we have until the major order completes at 5 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Wednesday, or about seven hours before this video premieres. And that's all I've got for our weekly recap. This has been another really good week, with a major order that kept us on our toes, constantly fighting back against these defenses, but this time on the bugs, which was significantly better for a lot of players. While the general consensus in a lot of the community is that the game is getting a little stale, I still think it's incredibly fun, and as the player count is as always continuing to drop little by little each day. I don't think that means by any means that the game is dead. Again, we are continuing to beat these major orders. We're winning defense after defense, holding more and more planets, and it's only a matter of time until we get another big story update. A lot of people have been theorizing since the game came out for that big update to be the Illuminate, and I really think adding that third faction will do a lot for the game, so here's hoping that we get to see that soon. I should take this off. I look stupid. But as for me, while these weekly updates are planned to continue for the time being, I am going to be wrapping up on the Helldivers Tuesday streams. I'm not really planning on doing them anymore. It'll help me get a little bit of extra time to get these videos edited and maybe get them out Tuesday night, but no promises there. Just keep an eye out. But aside from that, if you're ever watching and wondering, hey, this guy only uploads once a week, how can I see more of his handsome face? Well, not only can you subscribe and hit the notification bell here and get notifications every time we go live on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, and potentially still Tuesday, we'll see. But you can also go to my Twitch channel, which is a little bit higher quality of the stream, and there are built-in alerts whenever somebody follows, and I'm planning to add some more stuff in the future, so please go check that out by all means. We're currently playing through Black Ops 2's campaign on Thursdays. That's going to be lasting for a couple more weeks. On Fridays, we tend to just play random smaller games or whatever I'm feeling that week. And on Sundays, we play Call of Duty Zombies. We're planning to get ready for Black Ops 6 coming out in October, so please look forward to that. That's all I've got for today. So until next time, remember to be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.